Hello, you're very welcome to episode 66 of the Take a Poll podcast with Andy Cummins and Declan Carroll. Or should I say good morning, good evening, or good <laughs> afternoon. That's usually the way it rolls now, Deck, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're not even the hot seat it is anyway. Yeah, well, I may as well steal it off you. It's a nice intro, I do like it. Um, how are you anyway? How was your day? Um, oh, licking me wounds a little bit now. Mm. After, but, you know, we, we, we came in probably too confident into it today's card but um the rain wasn't good was it yeah I'd, I'd still stand by our selections to be honest with you i know that i know like i think we did an even money winner in the in the mayor's beginners so it wasn't a very uh prosperous card whatsoever however um yeah look the rain came unfortunately and it, it did more to the ground than i probably anticipated um yeah. and look these things happen i suppose it is racing um yeah look, look it is what it is like I, I thought Gabriel Ranger didn't get home on the ground. I, I definitely think the ground beaten mm. late on. I, I think he, he travelled into with the best. I thought here we go. Um solitary man burst. So Right. He, he's now on the bleeders list. Um That's unfortunate. Yeah, so like what could you do about that, you know? Um Kilkey Bay, I, I didn't I didn't actually see the race. Um yeah, yeah. weakened, weakened from like you did a lot. You, you did a lot early in the cheek pieces, and and yeah, it just faded as they came around the home turn. But you were never really confident. Um, yeah. But look, it might be another day from still a yeah, young horse. Yeah, a good race in, in, in that race. Um, yeah. I think you um. Yeah. Look, come here. So as we we have given twelve one winners three shows in a row. So <laughs> we don't need to be making excuses. We'll get plenty more winners. Don't no, no, don't worry. Yeah. Just stick with us. Yeah. Um, the, what I know you you didn't see too much racing today, Deck. Obviously you're flat out. But um, flooring Porter basically like uh, just reading the race and post comment here made virtually all led from first, clear from third, not fluent seventh, and he, he was not fluent as you said before. Air on the third last both times around, yeah. uh, twenty lengths ahead with not fluent three out. Reduced lead, but going easily to a canter. I, uh, so to win I the Kerry National in a canter. I did to... see a lot today. I turned mm. it on and he was in the home straight, 20 lens clear. Mm. <clears throat> and like, seeing a lot of people having a go at jockeys and, you know, lay up with him. How do you lay up with him when he's in that form? You know, can you lay yeah. up with him? You know, I, I, that's the way he goes. He's mm. full of class. He's a multiple grade woman or over hurdles. You're a handicapper. How do you lay up with him? You know, so it's 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 not just as simple as I don't know if it was a freebie or they just couldn't go with him. Yeah, my worries about him pre race, and I I actually was like, you can go back and hear it. Like I was I was saying, I hope he just comes home safe because he just wasn't a fluent jumper. But in those graded chases, he wasn't getting the opportunity to you know no. do what he liked. Um, yeah. I suppose when you put a in hindsight, when you put a, a multiple time grade one staying hurdler. Um, who you know was a 160 and change hurdler last year. He's officially 159 over hurdles now. He's probably still even a 160 odd hurdler. He was running today off 149, and he's probably just ran to his hurdles mark. Um, he's probably yeah. ran to his hurdles mark because he's jumped well enough. And um, yeah, nothing's gotten near him. Uh, look, I, I love the horse. I, I really do. He owes me nothing. I've been a big, big fan of him for a long time. And it is nice when you see horses that you like, even when you it don't have them back them. Yeah, but look, he's a legend of a horse, and and yeah, I like, wonder what they're gonna do yeah, with him now. Yeah, I don't. Know. I I still don't know if I back him again. Like if I was given the race back today, I, I still wouldn't be backing him on what we had seen. It, you were, I think, if you fancied him big time today, you were purely rolling the dice that mm. he would jump well enough. But you know, he got out in front, and right, look, in hindsight, on that ground, you know, they they couldn't go with him or they weren't prepared to go with him because they wanted yeah. to get home but he had the time of his life out there so um fair play to anyone who did back him um he was a nice price for you know a nice price for a horse as talented as he is but I, yeah. I still wouldn't be backing him again like especially if it wasn't going to be bottomless like yeah you know i i wouldn't have been backing him so like i i did really fancy solitary man um, yeah He's it's gonna a be horse, horse, but he I don't think he'd have got near Lord no. Lord, you know. There's not I don't know if there's many horses that are currently fit enough that are in training that would have got close to him right now. So I'm obviously not including your you know your top staying chasers because they'd only be coming back in after well they'll be back in already, but like they wouldn't be race fit. 
Like I'm I'm trying to think now what they're gonna do next with Florida Porter because like you can't run it anymore had you kept chasing in Ireland like, like try town and the paddy power chase the two big staying and the chases they're not the yeah, one they're not the fifty brackets. No, I don't know I don't know if the Troy Town is capped anymore. I am I'm, I'm almost certain it is. Uh, I'll double check, but I, I don't I don't think there, it was there is one cap five, on the Troy yeah, I think it's one. I think it's one fifty to try to. Right. Um, I will double check. The one, the one dead. Yeah, the Paddy Power is definitely one fifty. Um, one hundred percent. So, like, you can't run the handicap chase in Ireland, strictly speaking. You can't run him at Down Royal because he'll kill someone. So, I don't know. Like, I, do you, you send them back over hurdles, do you? Do you send them to Newbury for that long distance hurdle? Maybe at the start of their, their jump season. I, I think. Keith kind of alluded to going back over hurdles and going to Britain. Um, right. He mentioned it's Newbury. Then. He mentioned one at Cheltenham in December. January's the Clave hurdle, is it? That yeah. What would he have in it? Yeah, December. Unless that's the there's a two and a half mile one there. Um, the rail kills New Year's Day, isn't it? Mm, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's an interesting one. I I would have said there's a the Bet three six five hurdle at Weatherby. It's a grade two event at the start of their season on on a Charlie Hall day, and then there's um there's the long distance hurdle then it um that uh, yeah Weatherby, and then there's the long distance hurdle at Newbury that yeah Champ and Paisley Park went against each other in for about twelve years straight. So, yeah, and um, Ascot is in December. Yeah, and then he'll kill someone at Ascot, so you can't go there. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. um yeah, no, it's an it's um yeah, look, he's a great horse down there. There is options with him, um as long as he you know he's going that way around. Um, yeah, but look, he's a he's a great horse, and uh, it was great to see him do what he it did was, today. So. It was absolutely brilliant to see. Yeah, that was mm. you know that warmed us all now. You know when you see mm. a, a class horse turn around again. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Maybe they're with the Charlie Hall. What would he have to be? <laughs> yeah. If he's in that form in a small field, yeah, good luck ch- chasing him around. Um, and yeah. anyway, uh, right, let's let's start then, Dex. So uh, our you know, the idea here is we're going to do um, a little bit of a mix. So we're taking Thursday and Friday in and we're going to cover basically all of the handicaps. And I've thrown in the beginner's chase on the Thursday as well, because there's one horse I'd very much like to talk about. Um, yeah, so I think that's the, the best way forward deck. We'll ra- rattle this out probably in the next, you know, half an hour or so. Um, and yeah, let's get back on track with some winners now as we uh, try to accommodate this soft ground. Uh, this was the toughest race we're going to cover all night, I think, Deck. The Liam Healy Memorial mm. uh, Lurtigue Hurdle. Um, it's been a good race in the past in terms of form reference going uh, you know, going through the season. And I remember I missed Man of Work. Or was it Man of Work? And I think he won the older handicap hurdle, actually, which we'll cover later on in the show. Um, look, this is a, a really, really difficult race, I think, because a lot of these four-year-olds, um, and, and the four-year-olds were good last year, and they're they're going to be probably good again this year as they you know as they're a lot of them are probably still going to be well handicapped, but a, a lot of these are flatbred and probably prefer the top of the ground and the ground is going to be gone for the majority of them I think, um so the most interesting runner deck is probably Russell Sullivan's Eagles Ryan who was an unlucky runner up bumping into Lark in the morning in the build yeah. last season. Do you like him or do you think there's anything else in here that you think will go close? I I do like him and I I, I didn't I went past him first and then as I was struggling to really find something I came back to him and I think that's kind of hard to ignore that run in, in the Fed with they're off 123 now that was 123 in Britain he got five pounds for being beaten in that race and he went to Aintree ran off 128 but he's in here on an Irish mark of 123 he'll handle the ground and as you kind of said you might only need to handle the ground to get into the frame here so <clears throat> you know Back against horses' own age, he has been on the flat recently enough. I think at Navin, um, he he looked a little bit one paced. I thought in it, but um, he was staying on towards the end. Um, I think he probably takes the beat. And uh, an interesting runner down the end is Malbay Madness. He was touring a, a maiden here in June for Emmett Mullins. He's fifth from a recent spin on the flat. It's his fourth start for Damon McLaughlin. He's he's one I think now. If handling the ground, and I think he might could run a big, big race here. Um, and definitely one I, I might have another look at now the next day as well. But yeah, I, mm. I think the two of them will be in the frame. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah, the one I, I've um, 
the one I came down on, I, I will give Pino Gris a little mention, one we mentioned a few times on the podcast before. Um, I think we tipped it multiple, multiple times to win a maiden hurdle. Um, it didn't eventually, uh, well, on the podcast we covered it, didn't. it did manage to win, though, uh, easily at, at odds on at uh, Belliestown on its last hurdle start. Yeah, he's ran okay in, in two flat starts since. Um, could be potential for him to do better things off 117. It's just a matter of this testing round is just kind of te- reserving temptations at the minute. Um, I'm going to go with Bright Legend uh, for Dennis Hogan. Danny Mullins getting the ride. Um, he's a zoo star gelding who was disappointing in his last two starts, both at Galway. Um, I, I would have to forgive him it because it, you know his, he does have form, or his best form at least is on testing ground. Uh, he was a decent second in that Boodles trial or Fred Winter trial at Nace in uh, February. Uh, the race was won by Eagle Fang. Wasn't running at the most breakneck gallop you'd ever see. Um, but he was also a, a maiden winner on the flat in... Uh, at the Curra as a three-year-old so I definitely know he's going to enjoy the ground and you know he's, he's race fit and he had some decent efforts as a juvenile hurdler last year so I could just see him running well at a decent price uh, 14, 16 to 1 at the minute um, not as big a price as the the former Emmett Mullins horse that you put up there deck but um, you know if, if one of them hit the frame he'd be happy enough or even if Eagles rain um, hit the frame as well are you going to back the boat deck or are you, you going to stick with one um oh look i'll be honest i i can't say i'm mad to have a punt tomorrow um mm. i'll probably do a small multiple and i'll yeah i might show them i'll probably do doubles across um the handicaps tomorrow some something like that but right it's it's not it's not car tomorrow i'm really strong on something um but you know actually i will mention <laughs> sorry to go off topic a little bit we well, mentioned there's a horse running for um gavin cromwell tomorrow uh the thompson toms and i i know the man who trained him i'm not sure if he bred him he could have brought bought him as a foul um he does use french names to go pick uh william darty he told me he's quite a nice horse now um so right, okay he could be one to follow um yeah the thompson toms he runs in 255 I have no idea what sort of price he is but <clears throat> apparently he's, he's quite nice he was second in a uh, point to point but really reckons he is a nice one so one, one for yeah. your notebooks anyway on thompson toms there catching pigeons the, according the, to the deck thompson, there, so. it was it the, Tom, the thompson yeah thompson. you have it in front i don't um, that, was, uh, that, one, that one was from left field so he's catching pigeons according to deck so that's good to know thanks for well that. He, he did when he was in willies i don't know what he's doing with gavin's <laughs> Very good, right? Well, there's the Adair Manor opportunity handicap hurdle next, an eighty to one oh nine. Uh, I know you didn't have too much to really opinion on this one, deck, but um, obviously Bolton Glass Hill for for Philip Rothwell. We were down there with Philip, uh, turning power road riding as well. Yeah. Who's um, not a six year old? Not a six year old, according to our listeners. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, yeah, look, he he probably sets the standard here, deck. What do you think? Like he's consistent at the moment. Um, <laughs> look, look, he's staying on his mark, but he, he was only beating three lengths the, the last day. Is it the ground that you might be worried about him now, or, or do you think he, he takes a, takes the beating here? It, it's the fact that he's going to bolt up and he goes over the fences. It's <laughs> the problem for me. You know, I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting. I can't back him yeah. again. In the world. Um, yeah, he came up short the last day. <clears throat> again, there's nothing I'm, I'm really strong on. The ground has scuppered a few. Tarek Flavio, another one of Russell Sullivan's. Uh, he's a horse who probably will want a bit of better ground and there probably is a, a win in that horse but i think could struggle tomorrow and um, ben zion he be uh, he was beat nine lengths on handicap debut um if he handles the ground i i think he's a horse now who could uh, probably be you know not as exposed as some of the others and could run a big race and gander's town now you're taking a real gamble on this one he, he wasn't put into it on his handicap debut the last day he was pulled up twice in his last four starts but he's only a four or, sorry he's only a five-year-old and going into a second handicap you just couldn't put up past this horse improving plenty could you and you know we, we'll we'll have to share what's asking the questions why it was such an improvement but <clears throat> he's just one that i i looked at a couple of times 
and I might be willing to take a chance on tomorrow. Like it began this town and Benzo are the ones that'll be given a chance to it in this. Mm. Um Eddie's Rocket, rated 86. Again, wasn't putting in the handicap debut, but probably didn't show enough either for me to be really confident on. Like, it's just I'm not really sure on anything, but I, I'll probably do something that like double. So I'll have Eagle Drain and, and Malbay Madness rolling onto Ganderstown and Benzoin. No, fair enough. Yeah, uh, Ganderstown, yeah, horrendous mistake. At, I think it was the third last or second last at Sligo. He lost all chance. He's only 10 to 1, <laughs> despite being pulled up, and as he said, in doing his last four starts and um, mullering that hurdle at Sligo, which, which cost him any yeah. type of opportunity of getting close that day. Um, yeah, I found this race very hard. It would have been Bolton Glass Hill, but I'm terrified of the ground. And there's not many here that would be comfortable on the ground. And that's what makes, like, I suppose it's still out of season. It's it's late September. So, you know, you're not getting your proper winter horses in yet. And if you are, they're well, probably getting taking proper a winter ground. stage. Yeah, and we're getting proper winter ground. So that, that's what made, like, that's what made this card so hard. Like, you have to kind of, um, you just need to be careful. You can have a bit of fun, have a few punts, you know, they do it next down. Uh, you know, it's probably not a Chilean or an Argentine and I don't think the, the bet slip is that long. It's probably just a, a standard Bolivian or Peruvian for you. That, is it? Com- <laughs> Co- combination Ecuadorian. Yeah, it can't be exactly. Yeah, the very same. Um, yeah, no, a, a difficult race to call. If it go into my head, I would I would risk it on maybe Bolton Glass Hill, but I, I couldn't like even if it even if it won, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be celebrating it because I don't know if I could bring myself to back it unfortunately. Um look, we all just know we're waiting for Bolton Glass Hill to turn up in Fairy House in the handicap chase and Yeah. You know, we've 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 the jumps are back at Fairy House soon. We might come too soon next week, I think. But there'll be yeah. plenty to come over the winter, so <clears throat> that's that's what we want. Um Right, well, the next race on the card is the Proud Sarah and Mary Fitzmaurice Memorial Handicap Chase. It's a, a not 109. Uh, 4.25 is the time, and I've sent this the wrong way. Oh, no, there it is. It's down here. Um, I have it on Friday for some reason. Um, one no, you're not. Yeah, we're on the Behan's Horseshoe. And I'm on, yeah, I've, I've gone to the... You're, you're dead right. I'm so sorry. I was actually looking through the Friday card there. Apologies. Um, yeah, no, you're you're dead right. So moving on now to the four thirty-seven. I was right. I, I was rattling myself there. I I, I just um, unfortunately skipped my tab to the to the Friday card. Uh, the Beans Horseshoe Bar Restaurant and Townhouse Handicap Hurdle. Thanks for the save there, Deck. It's an eighty to one two three. Um, a full field of eighteen, but I do get the vibe a lot of these, and I, I I'd say it'd be a kind of a a characteristic of the card on Thursday and possibly even Friday that you're gonna have a lot of non-runners here. Um, due to the ground, hopefully not, but it's a really competitive um, handicap hurdle for the moment. Which one do you think Deck is most likely to to handle the ground and, and go close here? So this this again is tough. This is very tough, but there's there's plenty of all reliables in here, um, and I'd imagine there's plenty of horses here now that have made people a few quid or they backed a good few times. Maybe they've lost them a good few quid. But uh, I've gone back to an all reliable of mine as Jericho de Bon. One Had of a them. Mm-hmm. Um, look, he a five year old now. Um, he's plenty experienced. He was told he was last in. He handles the ground. He was running a really, really big race last year. Um, on the Friday over three miles or, or two miles. I remember six. you really fancied him. I remember that. Oh, I really fancied him. He went off at like he might have been available at 66 to one or something at one stage. Yeah, he was a huge price. Yeah, he was. He looked beat, but he started to stay on then. It was early days for him, and he he got rolling, and then he was brought down too out. But I think he'll run his race again here, and I don't think he'll be too far away. Whether he's good enough to win it off 113, I don't know. He's still a five-year-old. This horse is going to win plenty of races. He'll go over fences, and he'll win again. Like He's, he's won more than once as a four-year-old, I'm sure, or maybe he's... Mm. He's won. He won more than once last season, anyway. Like you know, so that takes some doing, as we now co- cover him these kind of races on the podcast all the time. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Look, I don't think he'll be too far away tomorrow, anyway. He's the only one I have in this race, so he's uh, he slips in as a single on the combination Ecuadorian. Very good, very good. Uh, I'm going to tip up a mare here that I think um, has potential to improve even further this season. It's Millstream Lady for Eric McNamara. 
She's um, an old reliable. She, yeah, she was absolutely an old reliable. We've we've given her plenty of talk on the on the pods before. Uh, winner on the festival last year on Yield and Ground, but she has won at Limerick on Soft to Heavy, um, and that was actually on her next start. Um, she's also a nice winner on Soft Ground and was. Uh, chased home bioluminescence in a, a grade three mares novice hurdle um at limerick on very testing ground as well so she's rating 116 i i'd say maybe she was a little bit over the top uh when they ran her at punches town on her final start last season she wasn't a bad sixth like she was beaten a long way but um look it, it was a probably a, a tough enough ask after such a long season i know they gave her a little break but like there was a lot of runs there on testing ground um Look, she's she's coming here off a basically a 150 day absence. Um, she has gone well, fresh in the past. Um, she is a mare that I expect like she's tough and she's honest. And I'd, I'd expect her to maybe improve, you know, to the tune of maybe 10 or 12 pounds over the course of the national hunt season. Whether that kind of progression starts now is another question. But she's reliable. She's tough. Um, and I think there's more to come. So it's going to be a male stream lady for me. I think she's a pretty fair chance in this. Um, as we move on then, deck, I just wanted to cover this. I know we were going to cover all the handicaps, uh, but I did want to talk about the Thorn Plant Hire uh, Beginner's Chase at 10 past five. Um, I think this was a race that was won, possibly won last year by Talk in the Park, wasn't it? Possibly. Oh, I think he no. won at the Lestal Harvest, or maybe that was two years ago. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, it's a Henry Bronghead horse uh, at the same time, and it's a horse I think is going to do really, really, really well over fences. Life um, in the park. Oh, was it? Did I say talk in the park? Yeah, talk Life in the, the park. park. Talk in the park. Russell Sullivan. Sullivan. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Mossy Fen Park. It's another park, but Mossy Fen Park is the horse I'm talking about. Um, so formerly of Clipper Logistics, um, they Are had they a big, yeah, they had a big dispersal. There was a big falling out there. Um, I don't know if they have any flat horses remaining, but long story short, the, 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 this horse was sold out of the dispersal. Henry de Bromhead made it his business to obviously find some owners, keep the horse in the yard. Uh, he went through the ring. Uh, they fet he fetched £235,000, um, and Henry managed to retain him. So Dara O'Keefe is going to ride him. Um, if anybody saw this horse last year, like you would, like I think I seen him at Punches Town when he was second to Predator's Gold. Like this horse is huge. Like he's really, you know, built like an old fashioned chaser. Um, I hate the cliche of anything he does over hurdles was a bonus, but like this horse was just stepping over hurdles. Uh, one, I think on Stevens's day, possibly uh, maiden hurdle on Stevens's day in very yeah. workmanlike fashion, but just looked gangly and just unfurnished, and he was just doing it all on really raw ability. And it was kind of came as no surprise to me as I I even think I said it to my dad as like he'll have maybe one max two starts this year. You won't see very much of him. Um, and he was off until Easter. I think it was possibly Grand National Day. Maybe it was Easter Sunday. Um, and he was they ran him in the in the Grade Two at, at the Ferry House uh, Easter Festival. Uh, the novice hurdle. He was beaten by Captain Cody, but he he ran with distinction really in my opinion. He was only beaten about six or seven lengths. Um, maybe not the strongest grade two that you're ever gonna see but like it, it's what this horse was doing um despite not looking like a, a real natural or or in any way furnished over hurdles i'd say you're gonna see a major major improver now this season when he goes chasing and he's the type of horse that would he might he might win a one or two races this year but what he does as a as a six-year-old when he becomes seven um that that's the thing about these five-year-olds when they go chasing when the younger they go chasing you get the value on them not in their novice season it's the next season when you you, you really see the improvements in them um but i still think he has more than his fair share of ability to win races over fences assuming he can jump um but he's a horse that i could see improving majorly um and I, i'd fancy him to go and win this on his chase debut and um probably go on to some bigger and better things if not this season then maybe next season yeah it, it is a race that could take a bit of winning and he um mm, yeah absolutely it does yeah but yeah. if he's a proper winter horse, he, he mm. should. Like you have Encanto Bruno in here, who he'll hate the he'll, ground. He like I'd ground. say he'd be withdrawn. I'd, I'd imagine yeah. he'd be withdrawn. I was gonna say the track might see, but you're right. He'll hate the ground. Um, Susikini is gone. Dartan ran a. I thought he ran a cracker on his chase debut. <clears throat> he went back over hurdles. They might not want to get too close to Mossy Fen Park, actually. But he'll win races over fences. He'll win races whatever you ask him to do. Yeah. Did you wait? You mentioned the eight star, did you? 
I didn't mention yeah, exactly. yeah I, I could say he was a lovely handicapper last year and um, he, he got into a habit of bumping into really well traded horses actually and um, no you're dead right you could see him winning some nice staying chases Um, don't know if he'd be up do you think he'd be up to win the beginners like he'd want to win one soon wouldn't he like when he gets he into the winter to, um, he was second to pink in the park I think on his chase debut yeah I think he's a nice horse I he, he probably shows too much himself um Boy, look, he's won plenty of races. I think he racked mm. up a four timer or something maybe two years ago. He's still only seven. I'd be hoping, like, if he was mine, he wouldn't be getting too close to Mossy Fen Park. But I don't know. Matt Smith seems to, you know, right? Oh, wait, the start. Matter. I thought you were talking about Yates Star for a sec. I was like, oh, the dark. No, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Matt, no, Matt Smith seems to, he, he seems to run a merit all the time. So right. <laughs> he might just run his race, and he's probably just a really, really good handicapper. And can carry yeah. weight and you know just run yeah. his race very capable matt smith as well i like he him as a trainer. yeah uh, and then what about yates star then Dak? do you think he'd uh, would he be up to think winning the beginners or do you think it'd be staying handicaps for him um i don't know he's like he, he wouldn't be on my radar to win this race anyway yeah he's not he, he's not one i'm closely watching here but that might change after we see the race tomorrow. That's it, exactly. I think it'd be Mossy Fan Park. I, I do fancy him. I think he's going to, I think you're going to see a, a really, really tidy performance that will whet the appetites. If it hasn't been already by the likes of Florent Porter and um, I don't know, those random French Jews, no hurdlers, people keep sharing online. Um, but anyway, uh, the 240 from Friday uh, is the MCG Handicap Hurdle. It's a, a listed event over two miles. Um, I think this was the race I was referring to earlier, Deck, about Man of Work. I think this is the race he actually won last year, um, or maybe two years ago. But anyways, a horse that I've always followed very yeah. closely. I've never been able to bloody catch him, though. He's a horse I loved. I backed him, and I remember I really fancied him for the Imperial Cup um, at Sandown, and I thought they might like try and you know go to Cheltenham with a penalty under his back. He didn't raise a gallop down that Imperial Cup. And then I think his very next start, I think he went and won, won this. Um, look, he, he's... Um, He's a good horse in his own right, and and he's had a, a spin on the flat to prep for this, so you couldn't rule him out. But um, it's a really competitive field, and um, really really good handicap hurdle. I'm very much looking forward to this. Uh, who'd you come down on there? And um, there's still like it, there's there's still I like, but again, I, I found it difficult. Um, Tim Surveyor, he is only a five year old now. He's a maiden winner at Nice back last January or February. Um, he, he ran in that race that Mossy Fen Park ran in the Great Two at Ferdy House. <clears throat> mm. He was just touched off by Volantis uh, at Galway the last day, and then he won at Kilbegan. He's coming in here with really nice form. Like lower down the grade, they're probably you know the handicapper has them, but as a five year old, yeah. good enough to win a maiden <laughs> running the list at handicap. I, yeah, he's probably the one. Uh, the other one I like is Helvig Dream. and. It just Helvig Dream is the know, former he, group one winner of Helvig Dream. That, yeah, yeah, you know, he handles the ground. <laughs> he um he, he made his handicap debut in, in March and he was never in it. And it's like it's hard to work out now whether he ran in that race and he wasn't off. That was our fairy house as well, I think. Um mm. you know, because he is a, a group one winner, he won the Tart Salt's Gold Cup, so yeah. <laughs> don't, I don't know whether he's it's just his winning days are behind them. Or, or maybe they were planning for something like this. He has gone back on the flat. Um, it'd be between the two of them for me, but I'd probably have to side with Tunes of Air. You know, he would be less exposed as a racehorse, a five-year-old. Why age is Helvig Dream? Is he six or... I think he's seven, is he? Seven. Yeah, he's hard, He's seven. It's hard to believe, as a fit, obviously, because he had such a... a I, I, I would say like decorated enough flat career. It feels like he's been around forever. Oh look, come here when you love that on him, like him. Did, oh, did he be which event did he do in the in the Tatsko? I think it was second. Did in he beat high year. definition? Oh, did he? No, no, he, high de he might be in high definition, but he beat the other one in the look another horse that ran its heart out all the time in the Japanese colours, the, the silver and black, or silver and white. Jet. Oh, Broom. He short headed Broom, yeah. didn't he? Broom. In the Tatsko yeah. Cup, yeah. Broom yeah, went Broom. from the front, I think, and I, I think it was Colin Kane probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly, lifted, yeah, lifted hell the dream over the line. You can't be Colin King in the photo, it's illegal. It can't be done. 
Um, um, yeah, look, we've seen the two of them. I'd be look, I'd love to see how they're trained there, but I just think, I just think we could see. The underrated could be one now that wins this and goes on and ends up back in, in graded company at some stage later yeah. on this season. Well, he, he would if he's winning this at Handicap Portal, but you don't know how good he could be because he is only a five-year-old and he was good enough to win a maiden and he's coming from that yard, Willies. Yeah, no, that that's the thing, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to take a chance, and again, I, I couldn't be absolutely mad on it, but it, I am taking a chance on a Willie Mullins horse, but it's the one getting ridden by Sean O'Keefe at Cara Dubois, um, who I think is very, very soft ground dependent. Um, all his best form, all his best runs tend to come when he's uh, when he's had a cut in the ground. Um, like we, he won a, a decent ground bumper as a young horse, but wasn't seen then for basically a year and a half. Um, I think he won a maiden hurdle then beating Union Station. Um, and look, I, I think that maybe 130 you could argue is, is a little bit on the high side for him. But he didn't run too badly in the Galway hurdle. Um, and I don't think, obviously, well, I don't, don't think that, that this definitely isn't um, a very, very, this isn't a, by any way as hot as the Galway hurdle. Um but he was he was a long way off the pace. Like he was out the back in that Galway hurdle, and there wasn't many horses. Um, him and actually, funny enough, Mighty Tom was up the top of the weights there. Uh, they were the best of kind of the closers in that race. Um, but Mighty Tom, because he was sitting dead last, got a bit a slightly better passage through than a Cara de Bois. And um, I just wouldn't be surprised maybe if he just ran slightly better than his likely starting price is going to be. So I'll take a little chance on him. Um, I think he's a horse that maybe we, did you get your fingers burned on him deck before or was it someone else I can't remember what you Tom no uh, Cara de Bois oh yeah oh many a time yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll take yeah. a chance on him anyway um, the 315 next up uh, the Southampton Goodwill Plate Handicap Hurdle in 80 to 102 over two miles um, yeah uh, who do you like here deck um, I will sorry Millen popcorn here. It's been a long I day. Your dad, right? It's been a long day for you. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm going with Oakley here. Um, Danny Mullins for Tony. Uh, he made his handicap mm. debut in May. He didn't jump great. He's going to need to jump better. And, you know, his jumping definitely put him out of the race. But as a six year old, after a break, he's entitled to come along if, if he's been well schooled and in a very, very winnable race. Like, I'm not sure what else I, I could say. I know Junot's in here. Um, yeah, we keep getting emails about him because he's still, for some reason, in, in the, top the top tracker. He's still in the top tracker. So is, is, he, is he getting removed now? Or? I might have to go back over fences. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, basically, an email comes in from Juno. Hey, babe. You open. <laughs> <laughs> That's the amount of emails it's, I get from Juno offering, offering us 18 million euro. <laughs> just, send me, just, just send me your bank details and I'll transfer you 18 million euro from, from the king of Nigeria. Um, <laughs> what what else is like breaking the clouds made his handicap debut back in January, but off since five year old, probably one that's going to be the next next day for Pat Downey. Um, and then Mount Ferns could be interesting. He's making his Irish debut for Eric McNamara. He's ran all his races in Britain so far. He may, I think he might have made his handicap debut the last day at Marka Raisin or something like that. Mm. He's one to keep an eye on. Might just take a run in Ireland before they try to win a race with him. But look, I'd definitely, definitely be looking at break in the clouds and Mount Ferns, but I'd go yeah. with to, to win this race. Right, I, I'm probably doing something irresponsible here, but I, I the blinkers are on tip for Mac for the first time. No. Um, and if you've come back and watched his performances, like, um, he is probably a horse that has snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, I'd say maybe three or four times in the last seven or eight starts. Um, probably likes to chase horses, doesn't do a tap when he gets to the front, but his ground versatile and is clearly talented um, at this level. So um, I'm hoping that the blinkers just keep him in front because he's he's definitely he's easily with he's easily good enough to win off 97. It's just a matter that of him just like he enjoys look look at his form um, and if you watch the run-ins of all his races like he's just um, he'd be banging his head against the wall and there's probably there's a lot of people out there that have probably backed this horse on his last three or four or five starts because he's always looked like he's going to win and he's always a pretty fair price like. 
Um, like his starting prices have always been, you know, anywhere between four to one to nine or ten to one in his last couple starts. I'd say it's going to be similar again here because people might be getting a little bit pissed off at him for, for a lack of a better term. Uh, but the blinkers go on first time, and um, that's what I'm hanging my hat on because he's clearly good enough to win off 97. So I'll take a chance on him. Yeah, the thing is, like you, you, when when you don't win and you lose like that, you do creep creep up the handicap. But yeah, he was placed off 102. He has been. Um, yeah. So like you, you're right, he's definitely capable. But if it's uh, whether he wants to, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm taking a chance. So it's literally down to that. It's very obvious that the horse is capable. Um, it's just that if he wants to be capable, but the first time blinkers is what's what swayed me there. I think that's kind of eye catching. So uh, the three fifty next end deck, the good old Guinness Slancha handicap hurdle, eighty to ninety five. It's uh, over two mile six. Um, yeah, again, it doesn't get much easier. Like this, this, yeah. this is starting to rival the Galway Festival and Glorious Goodwood on how tough this has gotten now with the ground going. Um, yeah, but look, we're, we're going to keep going and we're going to try and uh, find winners. Um, a little old legend, a 14 year old Hurricane Darwin in here, who is oh, two and four fifths the age of It's Not Over Yet, who is a five year old here and Spavango. So, um, Hurricane Darwin was actually like yeah. I'm actually I'm trying to I'm just kind of, like trying to fly through his form. Hurricane Darwin was running an, in Banks races at the Punchestown Festival when it's not over yet was being foaled. So um, quite quite incredible. Uh, who do you like here for the for this handicap hurdle? Um, well, obviously a big top horse thanks to Martinez is is in here West Clare. Yeah. Um, who just failed the last day. And uh, look. I don't know whether I just get outpaced at Galway and but but stayed on like a train and just failed. That was very, very unlucky. Um but he look he's gonna go off very short. We kind of we're not getting the value we did the last day. So I might try to take him on and I'm only looking at now, Andy, because uh, <laughs> as I said, it was busy all day and I, I forgot about these two races, so I gone full um Gary Thee and McCoy on this so I need you to shout me something that's never been better than midfield. That's not, <laughs> that's not a nine-year-old. That's not a nine-year-old. That's not a nine-year-old. Look, Spavango was jumping out as he ran in two handicaps over two miles. I think all Spavango's runs be over two miles, up to two miles six here. But has been off for quite a while. But look, when they step up and trip like that, it, it's usually the sign of, you know, it's, it's one of the signs of being off, isn't it? So, um, hmm. Look, I hope if, if Martinez is having him a, a go on West Clare to get his money back, I hope he wins. But uh, I'm still a bit bitter over not not getting that, not quite getting there. So I go with Spavango. All right, very good. Um, the one I actually do, I, I did put in this race more so it's more for my benefit than, than yours, that because I was aware that you weren't that, that you didn't get through all of the races. Uh, hence why we're recording a little bit later, but. Um, the one I wanted to take, a, you know, just bring a bit of attention to was uh, Lock Rask Rainbows. It's a six roll there for Brian McMahon. Um, ran well for a long way, I thought, at Kilbeg in the last day. Now, he was beaten a long way at a triple figure price, but he ran well enough to suggest that he has ability. Um, this is kind of off your your metrics deck. Like the, it does suggest that it's going to be maybe the next, or not, not, not the next day, actually. Uh, that, that's completely wrong. He's up to two mile six for the first time. Um, in handicap company now he's tried a, an array of trips over hurdles um but he's got a rating of 90 now and i, I thought his run at kilbegan he just got outpaced like it was a it was two miles around kilbegan he's up six furlongs in trip and um, all his previous form was over a little bit further Um had a few runs and points where he, he ran okay uh but i i just thought that run at kilbegan where he, he went all right for quite a long way and Maybe it's just kind of learning what's going on about the game now. He's going to be an absolute colossal price, but um, maybe he's one for the next day deck. I don't know if you had a chance to look at him yet, but he's the one I just wanted to bring a bit of attention to because I think he could run a big, big race. Um, but look, and, and you're probably going to get likely huge price, but again, he's probably one for maybe a start or two's time. But he's just the one I wanted to, to flag there. I'll be honest, I haven't had time to. No, that's time. okay. You can you can you can tell me oh. how great a chance he has tomorrow. <laughs> 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 After the race. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when when we're proved right, right onto the four twenty five. And um, I know this is all, um, this horse is probably one step away from the the walk away Harry and liberated light territory, but. Joy Vivo top in the weights here for the 425 uh, pod, Sarah and Mary Fitzmaurice Memorial Handicap Chase. It's a not 109. Um, not the first time Joy Vivo has headed the weights in the handicap. Um, still somehow hasn't won yet, which I, I still, my jaw's almost on the floor at this stage. Uh, two mile tree, softer ground deck. Do you think that is what, um, think that's what this horse needs? Or, or do you think he's, he's vulnerable? I don't know. Um, I call a horse a professional loser the other day, and and they won. So I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm gonna give this one a chance. Um, You're look, a braver man than me. He was placed off a of hurdles off 113. You know, he's in yeah. here off 109. So he was toured, toured off 113. But in in a spring handicap, it a decent enough one, I think. Uh, at Very a spring case, handicap, was it? It might have been fairly how so yeah he was very wide that day as well so we backed him that day we were both confident yeah, him, I think. Him, yeah. oh, but you, like... <laughs> you would be hoping now he hasn't been off in his beginner chases and that's why he's been a bit sticky at fences and he needs to jump if he jumps like surely if he jumps it should be easier over fences than it is over hurdles you know horses are the handicapper has a better idea of them over fences. It's mm. it, it, so like there's less chance of something being coming from nowhere over fences than there is over hurdles. Like, do you know what I mean? You run yeah. three maidens, three maiden hurdles. You run the handicap hurdle, and then you win off a mark of eighty-seven. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and thank you very much. No, you're <laughs> one hundred and twelve horse or something like you know. But mm. he's a better idea of you over fences. So. When you're not off of our fences, like he knows you've ability, he's seen you. you. You've already made a tick out from the season previous, like, do you know what I mean? When you've done it <laughs> off a hurdle. So he's on to you, but like this horse is, it, they're few and far between, like Andy. We look out for them mm-hmm. all the time, a lower chase rating. They, they're not every week, like the hurdlers are, um, or the well handicapped hurdlers are. So he's a good opportunity to win on Friday if he can jump so you're just hoping he will jump when he's asked to jump maybe for the first time in his chase career so i'm mm. willing to give him one more chance i i do believe when you've seen something you, you trust your eye and stick with it and you will be repaid now this fella yeah. will probably never repay us but <laughs> you know probably never repay us but ever lisa could go oh jesus my, my eye is still work like you know I, I did eventually see, you know yeah yeah hmm. you know I, I knew that horse would win a race yeah you knew it you know you knew yeah you knew two plus two would equal five eventually exactly so yeah. i look it's a good opportunity for the horse if he can jump yeah fair enough i again i'm gonna go a bit crazy here a bit left of field and uh, one down the bottom Paulo flynn horse a nod to get away um i just get the vibe that he might be a better chaser than he was or hurdler and um, they've been mixing it with them really well not really mixing it they went back over hurdles last the the last day and i think it was just maybe the only reason i can kind of see why they did it well, well first of all they gamble them um second of all it was the it, like maybe the owners were in killarney maybe the owners are local because it's another Kerry track i don't know um <clears throat> But he ran so well at uh, a Killarney on his penultimate run on the 22nd of August. He was beaten by King Ferdinand. Oh. And that was two mile five. Um, but he has a win at Wexford over hurdles on soft ground off 83. And what he did in Killarney off 87 when he was uh, just beaten by King Ferdinand would suggest to me that there's probably still a little bit more to come from this horse. Um so I would take a chance on him to maybe like hopefully he's a better chaser than he is a hurdler. He doesn't jump that badly, I don't think anyway. So um I'm going to uh take a chance on him. Again, he might be in a big enough price. Um low weight and handles the ground. So um and look, he obviously that race at Killarney on his last start just came a little bit too soon, but um showed a look, look, decent form over her uh fences just before that. So I'll take a chance on a nod to get away. 
uh, for the for the handicap yeah. chase to yeah, round off. Seven there. Old, older than two in power roads. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was a six year old, of course. Um, I don't think there is an app at the top. I don't think we really agreed on anything there. Um, no, but geez, I, I, I struggle to agree on one with myself tonight. So, <laughs> wrestling you know, with I, yourself, yeah. I, I, I do good. apologize to listeners and viewers for um, my lack of preparation for tonight, but it's been a long day. And, uh, look, they might all win this time. <laughs> Yeah, and then that's all we do. We'll go on and, yeah, McCoy and Gary and Gary. Yeah, just all yeah. <laughs> no, I'm only messing. Um, right, well, Deck, look, um, it, it was fun as always. Uh, anything coming up for the for the weekend? I know we've got the, the Goffs Million, I think, is on um, at the current. The Goffs I, Million, I, and we have um, yeah, yours. The Barrett. Barrett. And, yeah. Uh, good luck to um, the Paul, obviously. Yeah, see, absolutely. Um, um, wish, wish you all the best and really big pot massive pot actually isn't it great pot, yeah, million, yeah. Mm. So, I, i'm um, in west cork this weekend possibly so um um yeah so i don't think i'll be uh don't think i'll be able to attend the curra so well uh, you'll be, you, you won't be far from you won't be far from the stall that's true yeah, yeah we're trying so to the i was hoping to make it saturday looking at the weather it looks unlikely um, yeah, we'll have to make new plans with Kiandana, but look, so it's the decision to be made in the morning, and uh, look, we will see, we'll, we'll see what it's like in the morning. How much rain to get tonight, and take it from there. Yeah, well, um, with a bit of luck, it dries up somewhere. If you if you can't run the weekend, you'll run soon enough. Um, Chatham still the plan in October, hopefully. Um, it's it's a goal. Mm. It is a goal. It's it's hard to make plans with horses because. Um, anything go wrong they, they can make a tick out of you but if things keep going well if all the stars align yeah be nice to be to be there that would be very cool in and, and the honors and training yeah. yeah and it's nearly uh, always go ground in october and have a runner I, i'm going over anyway um mm. flights are booked i was going anyway so it's it's it'll work out well and yeah uh, be the first time to bring the young for there <clears throat> nice quiet meeting to bring him for the first time so it's good meeting Mm. Yeah, look, all going well. Yeah, look, you, you need every, you need everything to go well. Like you need him to be in good form. You need him to, you know, not have a setback. He needs a run. We need the ground. Uh, you need the ground in Cheltenham. So it's it's a goal rather than a plan. Mm. So, mm. but yeah, if everything works out, we'll be there class well best luck and hopefully it does go well for you um well look lads that's the end of tap 66 where with a bit of luck we've found a few winners and um, more than tap 65 and we continue to go and run um of the previous ones before that but um we just appreciate the likes comments um subscribing etc so just uh keep doing that and we'll keep supplying the podcast but until next time guys that was tap 66 and bye-bye